So um, take it away, Cathy. Thanks, Bron. So yeah, today we're looking at using the home uh, concept around sign production to be teaching sign. So when we're doing keyword sign workshops, um, how we break down a sign in particular for uh, our participants. So I will share my screen and uh, we'll get started. Now you may have to forgive me a little bit. My computer can be a little bit laggy when um, I'm sharing screen, but hopefully we'll work for us today. Okay, so the uh, objective of what we'll have a chat about today, as I said, uh, is using home, but also what it is for those who may be unfamiliar, how we can break down a sign using the concept of home, and the importance of using that when teaching keyword sign in particular. And I know we're pushed for time today, but if we get enough time, we'll have a bit of practice at uh, breaking some signs down as well. If you've got any questions, uh, please um, let us know. Uh, our moderators are watching the screen. You can pop your hand up. Uh, if they don't see you, you could just turn your mic on when we get to the question stage. Okay, so for those of you who are not as familiar with the concept of home, it's the components of sign production and we borrow that also from Auslan. So this is the same sign production used for signs in the Auslan language as well. H stands for handshape, which is 31 major handshapes in Auslan. However, there are actually 32 variants of those handshapes as well, making up a total of 63 different uh, shapes that we use with our hands to create signs. O is for orientation, which refers to the way that our palm is facing uh, when we're creating a sign. L is location for where the sign is placed on the body or where the sign is occurring in time and space. Uh, M is around the movement. So what is it that your the sign is doing? Is there a movement uh, in the sign, a, a straight arc, a twist, a circle, etc.? It's also about the speed. Uh, e is for expression. So this is now about what our expression is doing. Um, our head, our eyebrows, our eyes, our mouth, our cheeks, but also our body. And I think often we think about the face when we're thinking about expression. We don't think so much about our body and that becomes really important. So for example, with expression, if we were doing the sign tired, we might also drop our, um, drop our shoulders. So it's more than just our face and our head when we're talking about expression. So when we're talking about home, that is what we're referring to, breaking a sign down by these components of hand shape, orientation, location, movement and expression. And so here's an example. If we were using the sign uh, sister, then we would be breaking it down by hand shape, which is the hook hand shape. The orientation here has been broken up into two sections of fingers and palm. So if our fingers were up, our fingers are in the upright position rather than straight out or down, so the fingers are up. Uh, our palm is to the left. Now, when I'm teaching using home, I often don't use left or right because this is going to depend a little bit on whether your signer is a dominant right hand or a dominant left hand. So I often talk to you about the palms facing your non-dominant side or the palms facing, facing away or the palm is facing to. Location for this sign is bridge of the nose and movement is contact twice, sister. And so when we break down signs in that way, we're being very deliberate in how we're teaching it. We're ensuring that people uh, are getting the correct hand shape and while we're discussing that, we can be looking at the room. We're ensuring that they've got the right space in terms of where or location where the sign is occurring and the right movement. So it can slow uh, down our signing, but also break it down into manageable components when we're teaching. So if we looked at some other signs, and this is where feel free to jump in uh, if you've got some examples as well. I have picked purposely today one handed signs because I actually have a broken left wrist, which makes it <laughs> A little bit difficult when trying to get correct hand shape for some of them. So I have purposely chosen one handed signs. But if we're looking at the home for these signs, we've got mine. So we'd be breaking that down into hand shape, which is fist, orientation, which is palm towards my body, location, chest, movement, 
Uh, and this depends a little bit on how you want to describe it because uh, mine does, as the sign's being created, move towards your chest. Uh, you may just say that it touches chest. Expression is often situational dependent. So it's quite hard sometimes to give an example of expression because if I was saying, um, you know, that, that these bag of chips that I'm here, this is mine, I want it, it's mine, versus um, is, is that mine? My face changes between possession versus questioning. So often when we're breaking down a sign, when we're talking about expression, it's very uh, situational dependent. When we have the sign for why, we're now talking about the gun hand shape. The orientation is palm to non-dominant side. The move, uh, the location is uh, below dominant shoulder. The movement uh, is to, again, it depends a little bit on how you want to describe it because it's not so much a tap, but a swipe down uh, twice. And expression is often questioning in terms of why is that happening? Why are you going there? Uh, anyone else got any other examples that they'd like to give? No, you're doing a fabulous job. Keep going, Kathy Pryor. Great. I was going to say, I've got no, I can't see anybody on my screen, so I'm going to take silence as a no, but thanks for that, Tina. Awesome. All right. So if we move on, hold on, my screen's having a bit of a moment. It'll catch up with us. Here we go. One of the other reasons why it's important to use home when we're teaching sign is because we want our participants to understand that if we make a change to just one of those features, we actually can change the meaning of our sign considerably. Um, so here are some examples. Again, I've purposely chosen mostly one handed signs, but I can change me to mine. And what is it that I've changed? Does anyone want to jump in? What have I changed between me? and mine. Hand shape. Absolutely. So I've changed my hand shape and in the, mo in the process I've changed the sign. What about today versus what? What have I changed? Location. Absolutely. What about man versus goat? Man movement. versus goat. Movement. Movement. Oh. Yep. Movement and a little bit of orientation because I now I'm moving my palm out. Absolutely. And with the, the give to you, give to me or give to them, I'm changing my direction. So although I haven't changed the sign, I have added some meaning now onto that by uh, changing the movement there. So my next question and answer is to the room, why do you think it's important or how have you used home when teaching? Anyone put your hands up. Just I'm going to stop sharing for a moment so I can see faces. It's a bit disconcerting looking at a black screen. So anyone, in, I'm assuming that we have other presenters in the room. Yeah, Ashana, I know we can see a few. I've got a really good home poster. It's got a big circle in the middle and I use that. I can't remember awesome. where I bought it from. So I find that explaining the concept of home and where it comes from, that it is the sign production, it's how we create a sign. The other thing that I explain to people is it's actually, you can write a sign down using home. Hmm. So if you're like me and you're a really bad artist, even at stick figures, I really, I suck at stick figures. But I can write a sign down that I'm not as familiar with using the concept of home. So even someone who doesn't know the formal handshapes, they don't know that something's, you know, the good handshape or the bad handshape or the cup handshape, if they describe it as to what makes sense to them, um, but breaking it down using the concept of what is my hand doing, what's the orientation of my palm, if they understand that concept, then if they see a sign or they're taught a sign or they've looked one up, um, and they, like me, are not a very good artist, um, you can actually write them down in that order as a way of remembering. Um, and I often, when I've got workshops, if I've got enough time, I've got a handout that I've created as an example of breaking down home and then a couple of the signs from the 
um, vocab one and two as examples and I'll actually get people to write them down during the day. Then I have a spot at the bottom that is blank where if they've often as always in a workshop someone says what's the sign for aeroplane or what's the sign for such and such. We'll find it on sign bank and we'll use that as an opportunity to go through sign bank but we'll then also say okay that's fantastic now write it down because that's not in your getting started book. So use that template and let's write that down using home. So it's another way of them taking uh, additional resources home with them. Mm. Um, anyone, why is it important that we're using it, but more in particular, why do we need to know about home? It's Tina here. I think it's Hi, important, um, particularly for presenters, so they are able to keep their signing consistent and mm -hmm. true mm -hmm. to Auslan and respecting Auslan. Um, mm -hmm. It's part of us understanding and respecting that Auslan is a language in its own right and that uh, there will be variations according to different people's body shapes and how they sign and individual differences. And sometimes we might need to um, address that as well, particularly if someone comes to the workshop who's got compromised um, physical abilities in, in, in uh, use of hands or uh, maybe a, a missing digit or a missing limb. So we need to be mindful of getting continuing to have the meaning of the sign, but then thinking about what modifications we might need to um, accept as well for that individual. Absolutely, and Tina, I couldn't agree with you more around the respect for Auslan as a language and anyone who saw my speak this morning, it's, something, it's an area I'm very passionate about in that for us to continue having access to Auslan signs and to be doing that in a respectful way, we need to ensure that we are um, using sign production features appropriately. Um, but as Tita's saying, sometimes we actually need to look at that with um, the person in mind. And so Lynette, who spoke at lunchtime um, about Kalinda and Nixon, her two children, um, I've been working with them for a little while. Uh, and their modality around their signs can be a little bit difficult because their fine motor skills have, uh, have impacted around their use of sign. So some of their signing is not necessarily very clear using the home concept. However, when I'm teaching their support staff or their champion, the communication champions in their lives, we are still using home. We're ensuring that the people around them are using the correct uh, home structure when they're signing with Kal Kalinda and Nixon, but are accepting their approximations uh, in their handshapes in particular. And I know we've, we're pressed for time, so I've got two minutes of my allocated 20 if there's any more questions. Do you want to break down another sign? Before we go, what would you like to do? That would be useful. Just, just raise your I hand just, and we'll ask you to put your mic on. Yeah, that. Thanks. I can see Shana. I just wondered, Kathy, um, whether you'd be happy to share that resource. Mm. Absolutely. Um, that you yeah. put together I, home, or is that? Yeah, great. Yeah, and absolutely. Me, Kathy, and then when we make the recordings available, we will also make any resources that the presenters wanted to be made available available. No problem. I can send that through to Chloe who can pop it up. Okay, you've got one more minute, Cassie, if you want Okay, to one more minute. So let's break down one more sign. Let me have a look at what we've got here. Um, do, 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 do. All right, let's use sorry. Does anyone know the handshape for sorry? Ball. Yep, so the ball handshape. What would be the orientation for sorry? Palm towards face. Yep, so palm towards body, palm towards face. And I often, when I'm doing this in workshops, I won't create correct people in how they describe their orientation unless it's absolutely wrong. If they're just saying something that makes sense to them, I'm not going to correct that because they're the ones who need to remember it. If they're saying palm away, then obviously I'm going to correct it because it's not correct the sign, but I'll go with palm to face. Uh, location, where in time and space is this sign occurring? Lower face, like chin area? Yeah, so um, 
With Ausland, it would be right over the mouth. I guess with Kiwi Song, we often drop it just below our lips so that we're still having um, our um, lips uh, and words there able to be seen. So sorry. What's the movement? Shaking twice. We're, yeah, we're sorry. Twice. So. I know Chloe's going to kick me out, but I'm going to do expression really, really quickly because sorry does have an expression to it because are you actually really, I'm really sorry that I did that or are you cheeky and going, oh, I'm not sorry at all, not at all. <laughs> so our expression can change the meaning of that sign and I'm sorry for stealing someone else's time, sorry, but uh, thank you very much for coming to my TED Talk today. <laughs> Thanks, Kathy. Thanks, Kathy. That was great. Thank you.